Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship and fellowship. My name is Bob Zirkel, for those of you that do not know me. I want to welcome any guests here this morning. Please take time to complete the communications and prayer request form found in your bulletin. Uh, those forms will be collected during service this morning, and all prayers will be lifted up today and remembered throughout the week. Good morning, Mr. Lewick. Join us for refreshments after worship in the East Room. You're welcome to make use of our family worship room located just outside the sanctuary in the West Wing. The service is broadcast there. Thank yous. Uh, flowers and greeter was Eileen Wiley. Thank you very much. And treats were by Pastor Bill and Stella Beagle because tomorrow is a special day. It is Stella's birthday, so if we could sing happy birthday, that'd be awesome. your twin sister. Okay, announcements. Uh, they're found in the bulletin. Thursday the 19th is family prayer time at 6.30. Uh, Christmas shop is Saturday the 28th, followed by the crash lighting. Um, there's some notes for December. Uh, if you'd like to be a greeter, treater, flowers, or youth reader, please sign the um, binder, the book in the East Room. We are in need of all of those. Um, Non-perishable food collection starts next Sunday through December 6th. There is a, the, a bin will be in the East Room. Um, if you notice in the East Room also on the table, there are some pictures of um, some of our Plymouth family that have served in the military. So if you take a look at that. Also, um, trying something, going to try something a little different this year. If you are interested in a short worship service followed by a potluck Thursday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, from 6 to 8 p.m., if you're interested in that, please sign the book in the East Room. Um, we'd like you to sign your name and a number attending so we can kind of see if there's an interest to do this. Um, and then if so, there's already... Um, a handful signed up so if you're interested please do that uh, we'd like to know by next Sunday if possible um, kind of who would be interested in attending um, any other announcements Mr. Lewick wait a minute uh oh anyway uh, I want to say thank or we, our home committee would like to say thank you to everybody who stayed over and helped us clean up. It was really appreciated. It went fast. And thank you very much to everybody that helped. Linda has an announcement. Uh, just real quick, last week I wore a black leather jacket, uh, two buttons in the front, kind of short. Uh, it has disappeared. It has my driver's license and my house keys in it. So if anyone mistakenly grabbed what they thought was their black jacket and because it's been so nice, just hasn't had a chance to wear it, check in the inside pocket because you may find my, and that's not it in there. That's the funny thing is there's a black leather jacket in there, but that's not mine. So that's why I think maybe someone accidentally and grabbed it. And if you're anything like me, you throw it down and you don't find it until spring. So uh, no worry, I've already, we've changed the locks, I got a new driver's license, but if, uh, I don't want that jacket to go without a home. So if you have it or have mistakenly took it, it's probably mine. So thank you. Any other announcements? I 
have your attention. <laughs> now that I have your attention, we need some help. Uh, Sunday the 22nd, after coffee hour, is the time that we usually decorate our meeting house for Christmas. So if you can stay after and help with that, a lot of our decorations last year took a hit. So we've got lots to repair and fix and fluff. If you can't uh, climb around and you know, put things up, we can sit you at a table and you can work on things like that. Um, also Saturday, November the 28th, there's a sign-up sheet out in the East Room. We need help at 4 o'clock to tear down the Christmas shop. And then we also need help at 8, but sometime between 8 and 8.30 to tear down the uh, crush lighting setup and set back up for our um, regular treat time on uh, Sunday. We also need uh, baked items. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that too. Um, the only thing I'm going to ask is that you please do like we do for the parades. Uh, put them in packages that you would sell for a dollar. Label them, and if they've got nuts on them, please let us know. Um, for example, we got a plate of cookies that just came in, and we didn't know what they were. Okay, are those cranberries? Are those chocolate chips? Are those raisins? Are those what in the cookies? And people kept asking, are there nuts in the brownies? We didn't know. So please label them. Even if you just write on the bag with a marker, that's fine. Uh, this time, larger items are welcome. If you want to bake, you know, little loaves of nut bread or pies or anything like that, obviously we won't sell those for a dollar. Um, and if you need the little plastic clamshell containers to put things in, I've got a whole sleeve of those, so let me know and I'll give you some. If you need a flyer for the crush lighting or the Christmas shop, they're also out on the table in the narthex. And I think that's it. Thank you. Yes, please be sure to label the baked goods because otherwise I have to test each one of them. And I do not need to do that. No, but you're the first in line to do it. Well, some things are earned. OK. Anybody else have any announcements? before we go to our call to worship. Woo. Okay, follow along with me with our call to worship. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. Please join me in the Star Spangled Banner number 423. <laughs>
Let's pray together. God, bless America. And Father, I pray that the blessing and presence of your Holy Spirit would not just rest upon this church service. But Father, your word tells us that those people that are called by your name, if they humble themselves and pray, and turn from our wicked ways, and pray, God, that you will hear our prayer from heaven and heal our land. Heal us, O God. Heal us from the inside out, the outside in, upside down, inside out. And God, may this America become the greatest that it's ever been before. And may your presence in our land be so prominent that, God, it would be difficult for us to distinguish between church and government. And God, let the government do its work. Let the church begin to do her work. And God, that we would have in our nation a land of the free because of the brave. We pray your blessing now, Father, upon this service and ask for a special and holy anointing. And God, everyone with us here today said, Amen. Please be seated. Let's sing our next song. 419. our prayer request and hopefully you've had time to write them out if not I'll vamp for just a minute and I want you to know that I'm so grateful for Friday night the Harvest Home Committee put together a great evening we had good good music great fellowship and incredible food 
and, and three of the four committee members are here. Uh, Anna bailed out on us and went to Australia. But uh, we, had, we had a lot of work, got a lot of work done. Uh, I don't know what the total is yet, but uh, the money is now in the hands of the treasurer and will soon be in the hand of the uh, financial secretary and we'll get a count maybe before the day is out and I'll get that to you. But you know what was so good about la uh, Friday night is that we all came together, we all sat around, we all ate, listened to some pretty neat music and then we came in and sang and we heard the story about Joash. You know, I'm always impressed with that story because a seven-year-old boy became king of Israel. Now, if you think about that, that would be like Patrick already having a few years in as king. Well, Patrick thinks he's king of the house anyway. I know that. Right? Yeah. But it would be like a little boy like that being the president of the United States. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> you have your prayer request? Patrick, you come and take these up for me, will you? Thank you. Let's sing a song. What do we have? Three who? 358? Father strong to Pray together. Eternal Father in heaven, our great God and creator, who is, who was, and who is ever to be, we declare your name sovereign over us today. And over these requests that we receive today, God, may your mercy be upon them all. And Lord, I pray that now in the mighty name of Jesus, the sick would be raised up, the deaf would hear, the lame would walk. God, those with great needs, that what they would be met. Father, your word says that according to the riches in glory, you meet our needs. And Father, the way sometimes we live, your glory must be bankrupt. But we know better than that. We know, God, that you are the creator of all things. You not only own the cattle on a thousand hills, but you own the the hills and all that is there. So today we ask you to meet our needs. Those that need finances, may your hand bring them. God, those who need better jobs and jobs, may you lead them to the right source. And God, our family situations, those who need, Lord, healing within our own families, that you would restore relationships. And God, in our nation, that you would bless America again. We know, God, that your hand has been on us from the day that we stepped foot upon this, this land. And God, we pray that we, your people, continue the path of righteousness for your name's sake. God, may we be found faithful on that very last day. We pray this in Jesus' name.
And everyone said, Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from the first letter of Peter, chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. And, every, and everyone said, Amen. That's my testing. All right. Um, so I'm just going to do it from here. Everybody can sit there. So what I got this morning is 
uh, Jesus feeding the 4,000. And this is going to take place in Mark chapter 8. It said, In those days there was another large crowd with nothing to eat. So Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have already been here with me three days, and there is nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, then they will faint on the way, and some of them have come from a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can someone get enough bread in this desolate place to satisfy these people? He asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. Then he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. After he took the seven loaves and gave thanks, he broke them and began giving them to the disciples to serve. So they served the crowd. They also had a few small fish. After giving thanks for these, he told them to serve them uh, as well. Everyone ate and was satisfied. And they picked up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And there was about 4,000 who ate. Then he dismissed them. Immediately he got on a boat and with his disciples and went to a district of a town that is a funny word, so I'm not even going to try to... Dalamunanatha, something. Um, and so with that in mind, then we're going to skip towards all the way, or skip backwards towards uh, Genesis. We're going to read Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you may be thinking, how are these two fitting together? Um, we look at what Christ is doing. They're out in the middle, kind of like in a desolate area. And they've only got a couple fish and some bread. But yet, all these people are heal, or healed. All these people are fed and satisfied. So there's this creation going on. And since they only have two fishes and a little bit of bread, Christ is creating something called ex nihilo, which is, means out of nothing. Um, and when we go to Genesis 1, and we read that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, before all this physical matter was there, God was there, and he created it all. Um, so he's the first cause of everything. What this means, and what the point I'm trying to get at, is the same God that created the heavens and the earth is the same person that fed all those people out in the wilderness. And that's the same person that died for you and the same person that we all have um, as Christians. So it's just a cool little nod back to seeing how powerful Jesus was. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Got two claps. Would the ushers come forward, please? and we'll receive our morning offering.
Heavenly Father, may the blessing of your Holy Spirit be upon these gifts, tithes, and offerings. Father, may you return unto each one today according to their faith. Father, you said that some of us had faith for 30, some 60, some 100 fold. But God, the mustard seed of faith that we have, we pray, God, that you would multiply back. Make us, your church, wise in all the gifts you've given. And may the power and presence of your Holy Spirit be upon these gifts to be used to the glory of your kingdom for reaching of the lost and for bringing your kingdom come. We pray this in Christ's name, and everyone said with me, amen. amen. Thank you, Kim. Please be seated. God. today and if you do I hope I stay with it and if I don't take it home read it it's pretty much self-explanatory you don't have anything on your outline that I don't have in my outline and I don't have anything here that y'all don't have so let's look at what it says Knowing, no, that's the wrong one. I better go to this one. I better go to this one. I am who God says I am. Some of you may have an idea that God says you're this, that, or the other. Some of you don't really know what God thinks of you. Romans 8, chapter 12, chapter 8, verse 12 says this. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if ye through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the what? Sons of God. For ye have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That term, Abba, Father, is not like, O thou great holiest God of all heaven, Father. That, that term, Abba, Father, is like, Dad! Daddy! When our girls got old enough to talk, we couldn't wait for them to talk. Then we couldn't wait for them to shut up. That's a joke, and it's not true with us. Because to be honest with you, I'd rather hear my kids talking than see them quiet. Because I know what they have. They have great things in them. They have seeds of greatness, just like each one of you have seeds of greatness within you. And sometimes those seeds of greatness don't come out exactly the way we want them to. But the seeds of greatness are awesome. And if you have them, and you do, let them come out. Let your children teach you. But we are the children of God. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh. We weren't born into the right family. Probably we were born into the wrong family. But because of our being born into God's family, we are the right family. We're faced with many battles in our walk of faith. 
we face many doubts in life. The devil himself, the king of lies, tells you, you'll never get another job. You'll never be happy. You'll never, ever get over the grief. You'll never have peace. You'll, he'll tell you all of those things. The devil puts doubts in your minds and, and even uses other people to do it. I remember when I was in high school, my teacher, my Counselor told me not to take any college classes because I was too dumb to get through college. I'd be lucky to get through high school. You know what I said to him? How many of you have an idea what I said to him? What? That's exactly what I said to him. Mr. O'Rear went. When I got my college degree, he's the first person I wanted to take, shove it into his nose and say, look. But you see, God wouldn't let me do that because that was prideful. What can we do to overcome this? To overcome and have victory in our Christian walk, we need to digest the word and the promises of God. The one thing that usually is missing in our lives when we say, I'm weak, I'm uneducated, I don't know what God's will is, the one thing factor that is common in all of those arguments is the fact that people do not know the Word of God. Today, we're going to walk through many of those. You see, when you see someone walking by faith and walking by the Spirit, you can safely bet that they're also walking in the Word of God. One of my favorite little sayings is, seven days without the Word makes one weak. Someone asked me one time after I had lost 180 pounds, they said, how did you do it? I said, I have a surefire diet for you. They looked at me and said, okay, give it to me. I said, you only put food in your mouth as often as you read the Bible. And they looked at me and went, I'd starve to death. Amen, brother, your spirit's dead anyway. Get it alive. Feed it. Raise it up. Give it the word of God. Okay? We need to find out what God says about you. Number one, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. When was the last time you felt righteous? When you felt like you were really where God wanted you to be and you were really doing what God wanted you to do and you really had this sense that your sins were totally and completely forgiven? Well... 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Those are words in God's word that declares you have a right standing with God. Hmm. I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, Romans 8.17 and if the children then heirs and heirs of God, join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. How many of you here today, don't raise your hands, but I just want you to answer this question inside you. Feel like there have been times when God has just kind of put you down or let you down or forsaken you or played games with you or had some little tweaky thing to do just because he could. Listen to the last part of this verse. If so, that we suffer with him. The trivialness of the things we suffer in this life compare not in, a, in an iota of what he suffered for us. But we're made partakers of his glory through the little things that we suffer. I had an ingrown toenail last week. And I was just complaining. I said, I shouldn't have ingrown toenails. I cut my toenails all the time. I take good care of them, and it just hurt. And so I sat on the porcelain throne at our house. We have one of those. And I took the nail clippers, and I cut that thing out. And tears were running down my face. My toe was throbbing. I just, oh, it hurt so bad. And this scripture came to my mind. The things that you suffer in life, you think are so terrible, but they're nothing 
compared to what Jesus did. I'm an heir to the blessing of Abraham, Galatians 3.13. I'm an heir of eternal life, 1 John 5.11. Uh, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is where? In His Son. Can you imagine? I get, I get kind of tickled when people say, well, you know, there's got to be more than one way to heaven. Not the way I read it. There's only one way. Jesus said that in John 14. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am an imitator or a reflection of Jesus Christ. Look what it says in Ephesians 5.1. A laborer together with God. Romans 8.15 says, For we have not received a spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I'm the light of the world. Why would you hide your light why would you hide your light and let it go out rather than share the joy and the excitement that God has given you? You say, well, he hasn't given me any. Remember what I said about those negative things? Those negative things are, are because you don't know what the word of God says for you. Number two, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Ephesians 1.3 says, Blessed be the God of our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Look what it says. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'm blessed everywhere I go. The other day, I had, uh, I had to do a uh, memorial service up at Evergreen Plaza, Ever, Evergreen Cemetery, just north of the plaza there. And I, I was coming back home, and Stella said she wanted uh, these certain kind of floor mats for her car, right? So I, I was going to stop and get them for her for her birthday at the factory outlet right there in Bolingbrook. And I pulled off the road, went in there. The parking lot was crowded. There were 37,000 people standing in there with numbers, and I took the number, and it said 001. And I thought, boy, this is really great. I looked up at the number they're serving, 700 and 95. I had all them people to wait. I handed some guy that came in the door my number and I left. So she's not getting her floor mats until Monday. Yeah, they do. But you see, we, we get so involved in our time schedule, our, what we want out of life, that we don't ever stop and say, well, maybe God wants me to stand there in line and talk to somebody, but I'm too impatient. You all know me pretty well, don't you? <laughs> you see, I love it when you do that because at least I know you're listening to me. <laughs> Number three, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. When was the last time you felt strong in God and you could face anything that came your way? I've been posting on Facebook about uh, Joey and Rory. I don't know if you've been following that or not. But just such a sweet, sweet couple. And just have the presence of God in the songs that they sing. And she's fighting stage four cancer right now. You never know it to, to watch them and look at them. And they, they're fighting every battle with a smile and joy. And they're going to win. You say, but what if she? She won then. So many people think that's a loss, but that's a victory. We know, don't we? We know that that's a victory. Why is it a victory? Because the Bible says if you believe in me, you'll never die. But see, we only look at this thing. We don't look at the real thing. God said to us in 2 Samuel 7, 1 Samuel 16, 7, we all look at what you look like. I told Brian today that I pray for him every day. And he kind of went, oh, that's nice. But I, t I, I told him how I remember pray to pray for him every day. Every time I take a shower and I get all ready to get cleaned off, I take the shower head off and I run the shower and it puts my hair on my arms in cornrows and I think of Brian and I pray for him that way every morning. Now, some of you, I can't tell you the things that I used to remember to pray for you for. <laughs> Are 
Are you going to be okay? You sure? If anybody's got an incubator, she's laying an egg. But together we can face anything. Look what it says in Deuteronomy 28.13. I'm above and not beneath. Look what it says in Romans 8.38. For I am persuaded that neither life, nor death, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus my Lord. Not even cancer, not even polio, not even Ebola, whatever that is. Not even a bullet. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. And we go, yeah, but I don't want to die. I don't want to die. In the physical sense, I want to live to be 160 years old and still be preaching and having people mad at me. Can you imagine the poor church that I'm pastoring at 160 years old? Gee. What do you mean you can't change that light bulb, board of trustees? I get up and do it at 160 years old. (laughs) I hope I'm still able to do that. I'm confessing I will be. I'm kept in safety wherever I go. Look at Psalm 91, verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. He shall give his angels charge over thee so that he will keep you in all of his ways. Wow. Number four. I am not moved by what I see. Now, I've got something here I want to share with you that ain't on your paper. It says this. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I feel. I am not even moved by what I read. But I am moved by what I believe. And I believe God. I don't even believe what my body tells me. My body tells me I'm tired. I get up and go. My body tells me it hurts. I get up and go. The other, night, the other day I cut myself and it bled like a stuck pig. Did I stop? Did I quit? I went and got super glue and fixed it and went on. Now, she's mad at me now. Any of you that are nurses or doctors, they use super glue now more than they ever have before. And it's the same formula. They say it's, it's, it's uh, uh, more sterile. How do you get more sterile than coming out of a tube? Number five. I am far from oppressed. Any of you here ever felt oppressed? Felt depressed? Felt like, oh, man. Felt like old Eeyore. You know who he is, don't you? He goes, oh, bother. You know, there's a lot of us that feel like Eeyore. And the reason is, is because we're oppressed by all the things that are running around us. I want you to look at some of these scriptures with me. Isaiah 54, 14. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear. And from terror, for it shall not come near you. Now you're going to say, but preacher, what if it does? What if it does? I've lost nothing. And I've gained everything. Do you know what? There's there's another saying that's not in your your, uh, paper there. It says, a man is no fool to give up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Think about that. A man is no fool to give up what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jan posted on Facebook the other day about what she wants done for her funeral. She wants her arms out and her feet out. She wants to be carried by whatever and all them other kind of crazy things. No, you didn't post that? Oh, well, I hadn't got to that part yet. Then, then the music she once played is Pop Goes the Weasel, and the rest of us will sit out here, and the rest of us will sit out here and pray to God it doesn't happen. I, I can see the organ grinder up here with his monkey playing that. 
And about that time it goes pop, she'd jump right up out of there and say, Fool ya! But you see, when we die, we can say that. Fool ya! Because we ain't going to die. Our body's going to quit. How many of you get a new car every once in a while? Or get a new stove, or a new TV, or a new husband? Oh no, wrong, wrong thing. What, what do you do? You say, ha ha, fooled you. Things wear out. This wears out. It's proven it'll wear out. And sometimes disease ravages us and we can't turn them back. The only one who can is like Andrew talked about the creation of the food on that great day. That Jesus took two fishes and five loaves and fed 5,000 people. That wasn't a miracle of division and multiply. That was a division of crea- a, a, a miracle of creation. You know you can't take two little fishies and keep cutting them up until they could feed 5,000. You'd have to make fish stew and water it down so bad that everybody would get a cup full. It's creation that takes place. You see... Number five says, real plainly, that I am free from oppression. Look what what John says, beloved, now we are the children of God. Look what the Apostle Peter says in uh, 1 Peter uh, 2.9, that we are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are children of light. We are born again, devil-hating, demon-chasing, Bible-believing, tongue-talking, Bible-quoting, spirit-filled Christians, and we don't care who knows it. Except, you know, preacher, I can't say it here. I might offend somebody. I can't say it here because if I say it here, they'll think I'm a racist or I'm, I'm a religious zealot. Can I tell you something? Exactly right. I am a religious zealot. I believe in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And I'm not ashamed of that. It says here that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I don't want to offend people, but I don't want somebody dying and going to hell and saying, why didn't you tell me either? I don't want a church full of people just liking me because I I preach and I quit at 11.30. I don't want somebody just to like me because I preach those cute little uh, Joel Osteen sermons. I love Joel. I loved his dad. And I think he has a great message. But I'm telling you right now, folks, I don't want to be known for that. I want to be known for the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter who it offends. Because only when you're offended will you take enough time to find out whether or not that person who offended you is right. Why do you think I've read through several times the book called the Koran? Why do you think I have such a vocal output about what I believe about that? Because I know that there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ, and it's not through killing people, it's not through lying to people, it's not through deceiving people, Yes, the Christian church had its problems in the early days, but they never lied. If they were going to come and shoot you or kill you or cut you, what up? You you look at every Old Testament battle that was done in the Bible. Those people that they conquered knew they were coming. Don't be sucked in to this political correctness junk. Because if you do, you will be the one offended. Do you know who you are? You, do you know who you are if you do? Your life will reveal who you, how you live. John wrote this. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor anyone who does not love his brother. 1 John 3.10, real plain. Go look it up. Read it. If you're a child of God, let your light shine. 
Let your love show. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. And I don't know if I put this on yours, this last statement or not, but if you're here today and you know that your life does not reveal you're a child of God, if you're trying to overcome definitions that others have tried to put on you, or if you're all ready to break out of the self-doubt and walk in the confidence of the Lord, I want to pray for you today. I want you to walk out of here humbled by the fact that God calls you daughter or son, but I want you also to walk out of here empowered. No longer the tail, but being the head. No longer being under. No longer being defeated. No longer believing what others have said about you. Find out what God says about you. Now, I still have five minutes. And I want to say this clearly and plainly. We're celebrating on Wednesday, Veterans Day. There's not a person in this room who does not owe your existence and your life as a free American citizen. Not one person that does not owe your life to people that served like those on that table back there. That's what that thing stands for. That's what we sing about. Do you understand? In order for America to continue to be a great nation, we have to once more know what God says about us. Do you think we were founded here for no purpose at all? Everybody tells me, and I hear people tell me this a lot, well, but America's not mentioned in the Bible. Neither is a car. Neither is a truck or a combine. Neither are hearing aids. Neither was a cell phone. But we have them, don't we? So today, we're going to sing our closing hymn. But it's not the one written in your, bi- in your bulletin. I'm not even going to tell you the words of it. If you don't know the words to this, come see me. I'll print them out and give them to you. Stand with me, please. Uh, Just as a word of encouragement, the total for Harvest Home from Friday night, $4,846. Let's sing.
Indeed, God bless America. But America, please, bless God. Go in peace in the power of the Holy Spirit and go forth knowing what God says about you. This I pray in Christ's name. Amen.